I don't know that much about cyber, but I do think that's the number one problem with mankind. Warren Buffett Is your site protected from web attacks? It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Today we will see how web security module in Seedfinity protects your site. First, make sure the module is installed. Open modules and services screen and turn it on. Seedfinity 11.0 ships with web security module and you will need a license that allows it. Then open advanced settings, web security section. Here you will see HTTP security headers configuration and a list of predefined response headers. Nowadays there are many dangerous web attacks that can harm your site and users data. The HTTP protocol has an answer. It specifies a list of response headers that can configure and turn on browsers built-in security features. Starting with Seedfinity 11.0, the system adds another layer of protection to your site. HTTP headers are sent to instruct the browsers how to protect your site. If you disable a security header, the change is applied in the very next server response. In Browser's DevTools, you could see that Content Security Policy header is missing. Some of those headers are disabled by default. The reason is, they may require additional configuration for your site, or they are a report-only type and does not provide an active protection. You will find more information how to use them in our next video. Now let's see a practical example with one of the response headers, Content Security Policy. A content editor creates a page. He places an image and a script he found on the internet. Their domain is external to the site he works on. Do you trust this content? There is also an image from Seedfinity album that's included in the page. Let's see what happens on the front end when the page is rendered in the browser. We'll open DevTools to analyze the server response and check how the browser loads content. First, Content Security Policy header has been sent from the server. The rest of the security headers are also present, but in this sample we will focus on CSP header. Now let's take a look on the HTML. We have an image from an external domain. The script tag references a recent version of jQuery library, as these sources have not been registered as trusted in the CSP header, the browser refuses to load the content. Here you will see a descriptive error message that will help you find the exact reason for the blocked content. This message can vary on different clients, but it is useful always. But what if those resources come from well-known and trusted domains? The site administrator must register them in the CSP header value. Pay attention to the exact directive and the syntax of the header. Directives are separated by semicolons. Domains in each directive are separated by white space. You could allow the exact resource by specifying its URL, or you could add the entire domain in the list. We've added the domain for jQuery in the script source directive. Now let's find the image source directive to add the image domain as trusted. And let's refresh the page with the broken image. The browser loads the resources as they come from a trusted source specified in the CSP header. Browser's console is clear. There are no blocked requests and all the responses are with HTTP status 200. Remember, the site administrator holds the keys to security. He defines the whitelist of trusted sources and the browser respects it. In this video we've presented how to configure web security module and we've showed how the content security policy header protects your site. But there are even more headers. 
take your time to learn and configure them. In our next video, we will show you how to turn on web security module without disturbing the work of your content editors. This war never ends. Know your weapons. See Infinity is on your side. Be a security hero.